I want to thank you guys for coming to my horror party and ask that if you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now. Like this video and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. And now, back to the show. <laughs> What did you say this movie was about? Oh, it's great. It's about this guy who dresses up like Santa Claus and kills people. What? Hi folks, Greg here again, and tis the season for a holiday horror party. Santa's back! As you probably surmised, I'm trying a little something new for our December episode. Since we've already covered the original Silent Night, Deadly Night on our Revisited series, which you should definitely check out, I thought I'd take a hard left and party with the first sequel, which used to get much hate but it's recently become a cult classic in itself, mainly because of one scene, which I'd like to call the scene that launched a thousand memes. Garbage day! Huh? No! <laughs> I even concocted a festive holiday drink that you and your horror-loving friends can whip up in no time, and of course, a little party game to go with it. If you're a fan of the Silent Night franchise, you already know the whack job appeal of this bizarre sequel to the 1984 original. Hell, even if you're late to the party, no pun intended, you really don't need to see the first film to get up to speed on part two because about half of the first one is just recycled to pad out the runtime of this one. That should make things easier on you if you start getting a little fuzzy midway through the game. Well, maybe. Your mileage may vary. Anyhow, before you start the festivities, I'll try to sum up just what the hell's the deal with this movie. First, here's a quick refresher if you're new to our series. Honestly, any fun horror film is a good candidate for a horror party, especially if there are plenty of outrageous moments to keep you and your guests on your toes. Adding a party game just jacks it up to another level, and I'm here to help you with that, too. Of course, you don't have to follow my rules or my recipes. They're really just there for inspiration. Use your imagination and go wild. It's garbage day! For the last couple of episodes, I picked movies that included actual party scenes, and I guess this one does too, sort of, but that's not the point. See, this movie is just all kinds of crazy, and when you fire it up, it should keep the whole room in stitches, if for no other reason than the pure whiskey tango foxtrot factor. Even if you don't celebrate Christmas, or if you just really hate the holiday season, which I totally understand, you could still have big fun with this movie, because this particular movie hates Christmas more than... Scrooge and the Grinch cooking meth in a toy store. Also, take note, I'm gonna spoil the hell out of this movie, and by default I'll be spoiling the first one too, so consider this your first and only warning. Now for a little background on SNDN2, as I like to call it. As always, I'll go quickly through this bit. Just give me two minutes to bring you up to speed. If you already know this stuff, all you have to do is skip forward 120 seconds and you're all set. I'm even gonna clock myself, so let's get started right now. The story behind Silent Night 2 is pretty weird. It's an obvious cash-in on the success of its predecessor, which got a big boost from the well-known controversy surrounding its theatrical release. As the story goes, a group of so-called concerned parents claimed the movie's ad campaign was traumatizing their children by making them believe Santa Claus was going to murder them on Christmas Eve. Although I think a lot of that publicity was encouraged, or maybe even created, by the film's promoters. Although it did get pulled from theaters after that, it grew a fan base in the mid-80s thanks to its home video release. The producer's original plan was to put out an expanded version of the first film, but after the new scenes were written, they realized they had the makings of a sequel. They didn't have much budget to work with, so to save time and money, they edited about 40 minutes of the original film into this one in the form of flashbacks, taking up almost half its runtime. And that's not counting the 10-minute end title crawl that lists the cast members from both movies. Lee Harry is credited as the director, but his background was in editing, which made it easy for him to Frankenstein these two stories together. He was actually pleased with how it all turned out, even before it became a campy cult classic. That's Lee Harry right there, by the way. The sequel follows the character of Ricky Caldwell, who was traumatized as a child by his brother Billy's Christmas massacre as an adult, and subsequent death. 
Ricky's story is shuffled into the original plotline like a deck of cards, revealing his own psychotic break and setting up his escape from a mental hospital in the final act, leading to a brief but memorable Santa suit slaughter spree of his own. And as if that wasn't weird enough, part two wasn't even released during the holiday season, unless you count Easter, and after horror icon Bill Moseley put his unique stamp on the role of Ricky for the third film, the fourth and fifth installments just tossed out the story altogether and slapped the Silent Night handle on a couple of otherwise unrelated movies. At least Scream Factory managed to clean up the flashback footage for this one because they'd already remastered it for their Blu-ray edition of the first film. It may be a hot mess of a sequel, but at least it looks good now, so there's that. Punishment. Discipline. Eat shit. Okay, now it's time to choose our preferred intoxicant. Now, I'm not trying to drive you toward any particular poison or any substance for that matter. You don't have to get all crunked out to enjoy this movie, is what I'm saying, but if you're so inclined, it does help a little bit. Substances include, but are not limited to, beer, wine, cocktails, straight liquor, cannabis, caffeine, or even a shot of hot sauce for the endorphin rush. Of course, with any of these, it's important to know your limitations as well as your local laws. We want you to have fun, not spend your holidays in the emergency room or jail. The main thing is to find a substance you can consume in a measured dose, so you always know how much you're consuming whenever the rules call for it. Let's jump ahead. Let's. Okay, now that we've all established our dosage, it's time to play. Okay, here we go. Every time you see the psychologist messing with that damn reel-to-reel -reel recorder, take one dose. I was gonna say take a dose every time you see Billy's eyebrows go up and down dramatically, but you would have to get your blood replaced by the time this game was over. When you hear the words naughty or punish, take one dose. Whenever you see a red car... Red car? Good point. Take a dose. When Ricky goes on his neighborhood shooting spree, take one dose per gunshot, which of course leads me to the highlight of the evening when Ricky says this immortal line, Garbage day! Be sure to say that line out loud before taking two doses. Anyone who doesn't must take a penalty dose for not keeping up. Going too fast for you, Doc. Now I'm going to show you what I'm dosing for tonight's game. Start with your basic eggnog, and I would recommend a good spiced rum, Kahlua or a similar coffee liqueur, whipped cream, and some crushed peppermint or candy canes. Use a standard cocktail glass and a shot glass for measuring. So you start with a shot of rum, then you take a shot of Kahlua, and then you top off your cocktail glass with the eggnog. Then take some of those peppermint sprinkles in a very fine powder and just mix them in there. And you could just have fun with this part. You could put some more of the crushed peppermint on top, and of course a little sprinkle of nutmeg. And what the hell, I'm gonna put a couple of gummy worms in there because, you know, it's garbage, right? But what's really cool is to use a candy cane as a swizzle stick. So that's it. Garbage nog, bitches. Let's go! Start the movie! 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 Oh, All right, chill. We're about to get started here, okay? It's showtime. And I'll be playing right along with you as you revel in the complete insanity that is Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 2. Naughty. Be sure to come back for some aftercare as well as my final thoughts. I'm beginning to like this picture. But for now, it's lights down, bottoms up, roll film. Let's all go to the... This movie's so bogus. It really is. Now, it does take a lot of chemical incentive to be able to make it all the way through this movie, but... I survived, and I'm assuming that since you're still watching this, you're still conscious. Pretty much everything about this movie screams quick cash grab, but it does pack in a lot of laughs. Many of them intended, a lot of them not so much, but I still get a giggle out of it, and for a lot of fans, it's part of an annual holiday tradition. Maybe it'll become one of yours, too. Then again, maybe you'll hate me for even suggesting it. I hope not, or you might end up on my naughty list. So, got any ideas for our next party pick? We are totally open to suggestions. In fact, we welcome them. So take to the comments and let us know what you want to party with next. If you don't, we'll just try to surprise you. And who doesn't love a surprise party? Well, um, besides me. Actually, forget I said that. Ah! <laughs>